back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rufaro. I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe with your families. Thank you so much for coming back and let's hope that you enjoyed this new topic that we have today. I've got some of my special girls with me and we're going to be talking about toxic friendships and betrayals. The reason why I'm doing this topic is because, you know, what? I, I keep getting messages about this sort of thing. And I figured, you know what, let me just get other people into it so that we can talk about mm -hmm. it. And I have and I get a different perspective as well on this type of issue. Definitely go a long way into maybe answering some of the questions that you guys have. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. I've got someone else who might be joining us later. Her name is Olivia. I don't know if she'll make it or not, but um, we're just going to start. Hello, everyone. My name is Tinashe Pusire from Zimbabwe. Hello everyone, I'm Cleopatra Nyakunu from South Africa and um, I'm a pastry chef, so all of your cake orders do get in touch. Nice. All right, Nash and Cleopatra, what is a toxic friendship? <laughs> well, in my own opinion, I believe a toxic friendship is when you're in an unhealthy kind of friendship where someone is unsupportive of your own opinions what you say or what you do doesn't matter, but what they say is what goes. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a relationship where it's emotionally draining. It's uh, always about that person. That person is self-centered. Um, he or she always thinks about herself. She doesn't consider how you also feel. Okay. Olivia, I think you're here. Hopefully you've managed to sort out some of the issues that you're having with the tech stuff. Um, we were talking about, we really started the topic and we're saying that um, we want to know what, in your opinion, a toxic friendship is. Um, in my opinion, a toxic friend does not have your interest at heart, you know. Uh, they always have something negative to say about every opinion you bring up. So that's a toxic friend for me. So have any of you ever been in a toxic friendship or ever been betrayed by a friend? I'm sure we've all been through that. <laughs> yeah. What were some of your I have. Please don't give us names. We're not here to, 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 to try and cause scandals. We just want to have a bit of scenario. I have. I have. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, okay, I'm generally... Um, um, I'm always on my toes, entrepreneurial-wise. And so I had this one friend who would always ask me, so what are you doing now? Uh, you know, you people are, you know, are the people who are going to survive in the season because, you know, you've got it going on on the side and work and what, what, you know. And I would constantly give information, say, now I'm launching this, I'm thinking of launching that, I'm doing this and what. <sighs> and then my friend betrayed me at work of all places. And, you know, for some time, I did not know because, you know, my situation just started changing at work and you really don't know what's going on. And you're wondering, where is this coming from? Until I found out that my friend actually then written out that I do not work and I'm always concentrating on my businesses and stuff like that. And it caused a lot of horror for me at work. It was so painful. I still remember I cried. I cried. I I. I uh, and you know, I never thought I would cry over a friend at my age. Yeah, as you think as old as you are. Yeah, my squad. Even as old as you are, we still have problems like that. No, okay. Um, unlike cry. Olivia, I've, I've been betrayed. You know, when, like what I've said previously, when when I love, I love. I'm sure Fadi knows that. When yes, I, I just not to me, me, I when, you're like so, when you're like so close to me, you're like so close to me. So I'll tell this mm -hmm. person all my stories, A, B, C, D, boyfriend issues, home issues, and stuff like that. And then at one incident, something then happened to me. And I knew that she was involved in all the moving of the information and stuff like that. All the nitty gritties had been shared, ladies. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, when you're working at work, everyone literally knows your stories. Everyone literally knows where you've been, what you've done. And it was a painful moment for me. I felt really betrayed. And 
I thought I shouldn't have been in an, in that environment in the first place because she was one person. You know, when people say Rufaro and Tinashe are always together, that was like their relationship. The betrayal was just a deep cut for me. I said, oh my God. It seems like people are getting betrayed. Okay. You shouldn't have friends. <laughs> and- <laughs> yeah, that's lesson number one for real. When you go to work, you go to work, you just go there and deliver your duties and go out. Don't make friends. I, I- Mm, you know what? Someone then told me that. I remember I then confided in, in a spiritual someone. They told me, work is for work. Go to work, do your work, and go home. No friends at work. You will find yourself, you will kill yourself. Yes, I have. <laughs> Quite a number, but I'll just give you like one example. <laughs> when... when <laughs> when I relocated, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just that person who attracts the the wrong people, but I believe I'm, <laughs> I'm one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so when I relocated, right, I, I, I resigned, then I moved here. So to get a job, it was very difficult. So I, I became a stay-at-home mom. So my friends used to ask me, Cleo, let's go out. Cleo, let's go out. And most of the time I just used to decline. Not that I couldn't go because I couldn't afford, but it was just too overwhelming. Being a stay at home mom, taking care of the kids, no one to leave the kids with. So for me, it was more effort to go and hang out with my friends. So I just used to to decline and stay at home and you know. So then I had rumors. Ah, Cleo has got tambura. Can I marry Lanjana? She can't even hang out with the others. Uh, I guess even the husband doesn't give her. It doesn't help her anyway. And I'm like, really? We go. We can afford like every basic we want. I'm happy, mm. but just mm. because I can't hang out at that moment in time doesn't mean. Uh, doesn't when mean that tambura or what. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that was that was like really. For me, I have been betrayed, but I think for me, um, I've always been Tinashe. You know, I've always been a person who mm. just tries to make sure that I I have as few friends as possible. I, I try to mm. keep a very few people close to me. I'm not all mm. over the place. I don't have a squad. I don't have a squad. No, no, no. Ten friends. And then they call each other best friends. I've never been that type of person. So um, when, I, when I started working at my previous job, I, I really did get sort of get close to a few people. But I the breaking point, I when I realized that, oh, these people are not my friends, when I, when I started dating my husband now. And <laughs> when you ask <laughs> women and guys, it's bad enough if you've people talking about you, but when you confide in someone and then you hear those same people now going around talking stuff and talking crap about you behind your back, that's when mm. you realize, this is not my friend. And the worst mm. thing is that, um, I think another mistake that I made was that some of these people were my husband's friends before they were my friends. So I made the mistake of assuming, oh, so we are close like that. No, we're not, we were not close like that. They were probably mm-hmm. loyal to my husband because they were my husband's friends first, but they were not loyal to me. They were just being, you know, I don't know, being kind or being sweet. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think the thing that really hurt me the most was when, when we were sort of going through the motions and the dating thing, they would go and tell my husband's ex all the information about the drama that was happening. So they would come to me mm-hmm. and they'd be like, so what's happening, Rufaro? We heard this and we're so worried about you. I hope, you know, we, we know we're rooting for you. Okay, rooting for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, presidential <laughs> campaign. They always <laughs> root for you. And they'd get information from me and then they'd tell my husband's ex. And before I knew it, things would be out. Like what you're saying, Tinashe, like, you're in the workplace, you know, and you spend like ninety mm. percent of your life at work. And mm. if you're working, and you make friends in the workplace, that sort of thing. Um, but I sort of managed to to pick my comrades. Like I, I managed to sort of weave them out, and I did not invite them to my wedding. So 
<laughs> so I was like, oh, it's not about me. You're not getting an invite, my friend. You're not, you're, you're not welcome. And um, I think it's something that even as old as we are, we realize that people will let you down. Is there a difference really between a toxic friend and a fake friend? Mm, not really. I think it just boils down to the same thing, but maybe the extent of, of it is what it varies. A fake friend um, is someone that pretends. When you're around people, they they act like they're your friend, really. They are on your side. They want to be with you. They want to be associated with you. But I feel mm. the moment they leave you, then they don't want anything to do with you. They say bad things about you. As, well, whereas a toxic friend is someone that's in your life, but what they're doing at that particular time is draining you. They really are not supportive of your faith. I, I I agree, but I think um, a fake friend uh, is toxic, but a toxic pers- a friend can can sometimes not be, be fake. Do you get, get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, um, just... Let me... <laughs> Let me explain <laughs> because a fake, um, a, a fake friend, right, pretends when uh, he or she is with you, she'll be pretending to care. But then a toxic uh, friend, at times maybe she might not even know that she's draining you or she's she's always talking about herself or she doesn't consider your feelings okay because when i look about it um i think when i did some research on this topic they were saying that a toxic friend is someone who isolates you from other people mm-hmm. someone who targets your self-esteem and always puts you down and someone who you know one of those friends that never take responsibility if there's a fight you are the one who's always to blame they never say you know what i think I think today it was this it, it was my mistake or something like that. And it also says that um, a toxic friend is someone who usually uses emotional blackmail to sort of get you to do things. They make you feel bad about your successes or, you know, uh, when, when, when something good is happening with you, they try to make you feel bad about it so that you can do stuff for them or something like that. Yeah, you also always feel like inadequate when... Um, when you're around them. I feel like also, Rufaro, adding on to what you said, they're also manipulative. Like when you guys discuss a certain issue with them or when it then comes out or something like that, like you're saying, they end up uh, like leaving you out to be put to blame. They're always right. You know, and um, some of them are highly competitive. You know, um, I still remember I once had a scenario where... There were two friends, and every time this friend would get this, the other one would also get it or get something better. Got a C-class, we say this, she got an E-class. She got this, she got that. She got this, she got that. And it was so dramatic, and you're thinking, wow, did you agree to this or something? (laughs) Yeah, you know, there are actually people Um, like that who have very competitive friends, but funny enough, they're they're not toxic. Like to motivate each other because we are both like very competitive. So um mm. we won't sit down and, and, and we plan these very big audacious goals, like you know, things that are really crazy. But because of that competitiveness, I do agree that to some extent it can be very unhealthy. Because there are times when if you're not able to achieve the things that they've achieved or do better, you might feel bad, you know, or you or you feel jealous. You, you know, there's, there's a certain time when you feel jealous and you sort of brush it off and you can get over it. Then there are times when you feel jealous and you're like, ah, okay, I don't think this is healthy for me anymore. But like what you're saying, you need to really um, mm. then think about those things to say if, if the competitiveness is helping you to grow, to be a better person, or if anything, it's making you feel small and inadequate. Like what Cleo was saying, that the people that just make you feel inadequate and they make you feel like you're not good enough and those are some of the toxic signs. Mm. Yeah, it's some of the red flags. And then... um. So what are some of the red flags of a fake friend? Uh, okay, I think uh, like when you're having a conversation, when you meet up, at times you just need a friend to to listen to you because maybe you'll be in a bad space, right? But uh, a toxic friend won't let you pour your heart out. It will end up being about her, not about you. 
like i'm telling you something i'm going through this and it's you know what i was going through the same and all of a sudden the topic changes and it's all about her and she she doesn't listen she forgets about you so i think that's one of of the red flags you know i feel like you know what um fake friends are people that disappear when you need them the most you know there are times when you go through very difficult times in your life either you're broke you lost your job or you you broke up with someone in a relationship when they when you really need them to be there to show up um they know it to be seen i can agree with you rufaro uh, and then the I... famous sona statement that they will say ah clear paid amazwano like she's <laughs> she's got nothing those are the top <laughs> friends that you have not there to support you but in the great background and busy telling people ah she's got nothing nowadays so don't even go to her you're right oh, okay. then, yeah you're very right about that and i also think um i love the signs of being healthy having a fake friend are people who find it very hard to be difficult to be happy for you when you're mm. still mm. in that moment in your life You know I I remember it took me like 3 years to realize that I have a friend who is not a friend. You know so when something <laughs> good happens to me for some reason should be the last person I would tell and in some cases I would be so scared to tell her because of the reaction that she would always you know when someone is is trying very hard um to sort of hide their their sadness or their disappointment. you know mm-hmm. But, oh, okay mm-hmm. so you you bought a phone for example or you bought a car it's like that person you know say congratulations whatever it is god blesses you blah 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 they start making you feel bad you know they can tell you e inga yenya skana zvino zviri kufaya that sort of thing of in the end it takes away the joy of the moment yeah and then i also was about to say mm-hmm. another another thing that can a red flag is when you're always the one saying sharing your own stuff about your personal life to that person and then they never share anything that's a red flag be very sure your stories are out there because she never tells you anything they never do you like sharing my even if <laughs> they do have a, a certain way rufaro of asking you or wanting to know what to know what's going on in your life so who's the lucky guy So what I what have you been up to these days and you feel very comfortable sharing mm. then they never share exactly <laughs> you know they're always fishing out information <laughs> about you they want to know more and yet I I I actually had one friend like that they always wanted to know more about me what are you doing mm-hmm. about this to there you know what's moving these days and everything like that but you know what you actually do feel drained because in as yeah. much as i am taking out i also need to replenish and the way i'm replenishing is you then telling me about yourself because it's mm-hmm. a two way street if we are friends it should we should meet each other halfway it's a relationship so if i'm the one who's constantly going ah, ah, no it, it won't work it's draining it's mm-hmm. draining